And we're back. It's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are here yet again. This week is a pretty special one, though. We'll get to it in a second. But I want to welcome you back to Sew Together Tuesday. If you are new here, please give us an extra little heart or let us know where you're coming from. Um, we always like to have the new people here. Super exciting to have new faces every time. Or I guess it's new names, right? I don't get to see them. You get to see me, but I don't get to see you. New personalities. New personalities, new comments. So we're excited that you're here. Thanks for coming to Sew Together Tuesday. Today we are back and we're going to talk about a few different things. I, before we get too far into it, I want to talk about a couple of things that are happening. It is November, so it is holiday season, all the holidays. And in my family, all the birthdays are happening now. We have three in my little family. They're in November. So it is birthday and holiday season. It's pretty exciting. So we are having some different projects that are good gift giving, but we're also doing a fundraiser. So one of the things you may not know is Shannon Fabrics has a nonprofit called Making the World a Softer Place. And we do different projects for um, families in various circumstances. So right now we are doing one for families who are food insecure and are looking for some holiday help or some need, need some holiday help. So one of the things we're doing is we're raising money for it. You can go to makingtheworldasofterplace.org and donate. And for $40 is what we're um, asking for. For each of those donations, you get, you give a whole bag of food. So do you want to show the bag of food? So this whole bag of food is, it, this bag is filled with all the stuff that you're going to need for a holiday dinner. Plus, each recipient will get a gift card to buy their own choice of protein. So you can have a whole holiday meal. So we are asking for your help so we can feed more families. So if you go to makingtheworldasofterplace.org, you'll be able to find the donation link. Like I said, 40 bucks, you give a whole holiday meal. And um, I think it's a really wonderful thing. We are um, wanting to acknowledge the people who helped out last week. We announced it last week and we said we would give a shout out to all of you who helped. There we go. <laughs> we'll figure it out which way is it. Um, so the, a big, big thank you to Kathy, Roseanne, Stephanie, Ellen, Karen, and Marion. So thank you so much for caring enough to give it this holiday season. We really appreciate you a lot. We will do the same thing next week. So if you um, are one of those who will donate this week, we will list your name next week and give you a public shout out because we really, we can't do this without you. And we really, really appreciate you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I appreciate it. So um, we also have some fun things coming up next week. We're going to do some traveling. We'll talk about that at the end um, and announce our upcoming stuff. But I want to get started with our special guest today. So if you have followed us for a little bit, we talked about this before, and you probably saw I was uh, on my Annie's uh, live a couple of weeks ago. So I was part of her live as part of the So Pink initiative that they do, that they do a breast cancer awareness and fundraiser, do a big blog hop. Like, so there's a bunch of us that participate. And we were on there and we talked about her, one of her patterns, which is called the bosom buddy. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today, but um, I think that's it. Oh, we need to tell people to share the video. So share, 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 share the video with your favorite sewing friends and all of that good stuff. And at the end, we have three kits that I'll let Annie show you in just a minute um, that we're going to be giving away at the end. So you can make your own bosom buddy with cuddle fabric. So I think that's all. Then we can switch over. Is that right? <laughs> All right, so let's go see Andy. She's here with us um, via live. So let's see if we can figure this. Hello. Okay, how about now? I can hear you now. Okay, good. All right, let me get my little stool and I'm going to come over and sit with you and talk. Okay, so we have to figure out the camera stuff. I think we got it. I think we can hear each other uh, just so fine. Awesome. All right, so Bosom Buddy, tell me about this pattern and how it came to be. All right, so several years ago when we started our So Pink campaign, which again, we do every October to raise awareness of breast cancer, I was contacted by a customer who had a daughter-in-law who was quite young, I think only maybe in her 20s, who had a family history of um, breast cancer and had the BRCA gene. And so she had decided 
to get a mastectomy to reduce her risk of breast cancer in the future. And they had come up with a pattern because what she found is that when she needed to go for a ride in the car, it was a really sore area and she needed right. something to cushion it. And so she had um, sent me some information about the pattern. And as we were just getting started with our breast cancer awareness stuff, I said, um, would you mind if we wrote a biani pattern based on your design and made that available as a free pattern for people to make for their loved ones, for themselves, or whoever. And so they graciously gave us permission to do that. And so we wrote a pattern, which is called Bosom Buddy. It's designed to use in your car um, as a seatbelt cushion. So it's got a little belt wrap, this is called, on it that fastens with Velcro. You put this on your chest, you put the seatbelt on, and then you close the Velcro and it stays right there. I don't have breast cancer. I haven't had any problems with that, but I'm short. And I have also found this is really nice just to keep the seatbelt from rubbing against mm -hmm. my neck. So it's ideal for that as well. So the pattern includes instructions for making it using soft and stable to give it great padding. It's also designed to be made with just cotton fabrics, which most people have, um, scraps in their stash. But when we started looking at things to do this year and we saw your wonderful cuddle fabrics made with both the breast, the pink ribbon design, the pink sparkle with the um, glitter in it, we just said, oh, man, that would be just like having a whole nother hug uh, against your um, body. So we made some using the cuddle and we really love how these turned out. They're really, really beautiful. Yeah, and I know that you worked on, a, I have, I left mine at Quilt Festival. I do have one. Look, at, we have it with a cute little seatbelt inside. Let's see if I can hold this up. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, okay. wow, aren't you good? <laughs> <laughs> so well, fancy, but it does, it fits perfectly. That was the thing I was super impressed with is it fit absolutely perfectly. And this one I did a little differently and we'll kind of show the variation. This one I used a little bit of cotton on it. So we can do it like yours have the cotton completely or cuddle completely. This one is a mix of the two. And today we're going to do it just with the, with the one fabric. The other thing that I forgot to mention is for somebody who's maybe had surgery and has a port, these mm. really help cushion that area. Or if someone's had surgery across this section, you can also put it on the lap belt and it provides protection there as well. Right, right, yeah, super good, super good. Um, so I really, I love this, pro uh, this product and we, or the project, we've made it a few times and um, it's fab, so thanks. We have talked, we talked a little bit about some other patterns and I wanna show just a few because this all kind of came about when I stopped and visited Annie on the way back from our Sew Together Tuesday tour in September, I think it was, that I stopped by and we were like, oh, we should make some projects together with your your um, projects and patterns and my uh, fabric. So that's what we, um, we decided to do. So we tried some. I have a few that I made and I want to just talk about this real quick. So um, one of the things about buying any patterns is you can get them, you can get the, the paper patterns from your website, correct, Annie? Yes. Okay. So you can buy- Or your local quilt shop. Or your local quilt shop. That I was going to say. So your local quilt shop will have a lot of these patterns because that is one of the constants that we saw on the road is these patterns are everywhere. Okay. You want to make sure that you are getting the patterns and then getting all of the materials that go with it. So there's often a variety of things. We'll talk a little bit about the soft and stable that goes into that, but not all of them require- um, which is the, I think the product that you're kind of known for is the, the soft and stable. Soft and stable, yes. And it really does make a big difference in the project. So a couple of them that I did, I did a little, I'm gonna show you just a little charmer, okay? Let me show you, here we go. So this is how it turned out in the cuddle. That looks so fabulous. It's super cute. Tell me the name of this stuff again. You told Stitch and so, so when we wrote the pattern, we were using Superior Threads Texture Magic, which was the, kind of the original shrinking fabric that came out. They don't sell it anymore, but Bosal makes one called Stitch and Steam. And that's mm -hmm. what we carry on our website and what most yeah. stores, if they carry something like that, will have. Yeah, so it's a so fabric that shrinks. And so when you sew it to something, you produce texture. 
Right, exactly. Like I just I sewed it on there. I sewed it with a big serpentine stitch and then you just steam it and it all shrinks up and creates this really texturized fabric. So like cuddle is textured anyway. It just kind of comes that way. It's got a really fun feel to it. Then you add this to it and it's even better. So I did a serpentine stitch for all of you in the audience who are like, what did she do? It's a serpentine stitch, just the regular one that I do and then just ironed it and well, not ironed it, steamed it. Don't touch the iron. Um, that's bad. It melts a lot. Um, so don't do that. That's the little charmer, just so you know. The other one that I did um, is the eye cases. Let me show you that pattern. So for me, it's easier if I remember that. If I can see the pattern, I can remember what to look for. So this is the pattern that you're going to look for. We saw this when we were at, um, at Annie's warehouse there, and we were like, why have I not done this with cuddle in the middle yet? I don't know. So I did. <laughs> okay. That's so, this so fabulous. It is so good. And it, like this has the, the um, soft and stable in it. So it's nice and soft and cushy. And then it has the extra softness and the cushion of the cuddle as well. So that was super fun. You have a couple of projects that you had done too, Annie. I do. So we, when we looked at Cuddle, we said, oh man, that's just perfect for babies. So the first one that we did, this is a pattern called Changing Station that's made for parents when, they're, when they don't need to take the whole diaper bag. All they need is a couple diapers, some wet wipes, maybe a change of clothes. And so it's just a little clutch that you can carry by hand. It's got a little wrist strap or you can hook it on your stroller pocket on the outside for keys and a phone. And then when you open it up, there's a couple of mesh pockets to put the diapers and wipes in. But then there's a big pad that opens up to lay the baby on. Super and we cute. use the playtime cuddle on here. And it's like, oh man, any baby's gonna just love to lay down and get their diaper changed when they've got something <laughs> so soft and soft and warm and comfy to lay on. So we just cute. use that and we quilted it with the main fabric and then bound it and it folds up nice and compact because soft and stable and cuddle and cotton fabrics are all really washable if it gets dirty you throw it in the wash and it comes out looking brand new so yeah. that was one that we did then we uh, this is another pattern that is called everyday every way which is designed to be a diaper bag it can be carried over the shoulder, it's got a carrying strap, it's got backpack straps, lots of ways to use it. And included in the pattern is a little changing mat. Again, we thought, oh, that would be ideal made with the um, cuddle fabric. So we used the embossed arrows on one side, we used the really textured uh, Lux Minky on the other side. And then this was my first experience using cuddle to bind. So I cut the one and three quarter inch strips, sewed it all the way around. And I love the, the soft, fluffy look that that mm -hmm. gives. So then that just rolls up and has a couple Velcro strips on it. So you can put it in the bag and it nice. doesn't take up very much room. And then we thought, oh, well, it'd be perfect for a little bib. So we did a bib with the reversible cuddle on both sides and then just a little small one. And again, I used the cuddle to um, bind it and just extended that to make the ties it's a little bit um, fluffy I don't know if it, <laughs> if it would bug a baby but I thought oh it's really nice and soft so that we just had fun playing with it I and I feel like that's part of it is the, when you're finding new patterns and finding new projects to do is that yeah yeah you're just playing with it trying to figure it out so right and this uses just little scraps left from you know some other things so it's fun to fun to experiment a little bit. Totally. And I love the, um, the changing station on it. Cause you're absolutely right. Like cuddle is so washable that it absolutely works for that. It's comfortable. Baby's not going to stick to it. Like some of those plasticky ones. Um, right. yeah. And still totally washable. So it's great. Right. Yeah. I really, I really like them. I really appreciate your help with, um, doing all this. Will you show yours? We're going to talk about this a little later when we get to the binding, but show yours. Cause you did your binding with a quarter inch binding. Well, because. I did a couple different ways. So this was the first one I made and I did it mm -hmm. the way you explained, cutting the binding right. one and three quarter inch, sewing mm -hmm. it on with a half inch seam and then bringing it around. But 
I'm not used to sewing a half inch seam and I found right. that much harder than just sewing a quarter inch seam. So when I did these other two, I just cut the binding at one and a quarter inches wide, sewed it with a quarter inch seam and then brought it around and stitched along the edge with the serpentine stitch. So I did that on both of these and right. that was much easier for me and I thought it turned out great. I love the fact that you don't have to turn under any edges. I threw both of these in the washer and dryer because I wasn't convinced that it wouldn't fray and it didn't. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. So that was really fun to see. Good, good. Yeah. I just want to make sure we show that because I think that's one of the things about like learning new skills is like, like each of us, we teach people how to sew in different projects, but we we're really, I think part of it is trying to teach people how to explore and how to try new things and see what happens. So what works for me may not work exactly for you. And I think that that was a really good example of that is that I really like the half inch binding. It works very well but because you are so used to working with a quarter inch binding. That's yeah. what worked really well for you. So right. we'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to it. Um, did you have anything else you want to add about the pattern? Oh, you have a special tip sheet on your website. Yes, right? exactly. So first of all, if you go to byannie.com and just type in bosom buddy in the search box, you will come up with a PDF that you can download and print a add on video that goes step by step through the project as it's written using the cotton fabrics. Mm -hmm. And you'll also um, see a pack of it. So if you're a store or a quilt guild and you want to offer this as a group, we sell packs with 10 full color printed patterns in them. It's a four page pattern. So 10 in a pack, very reasonably priced. You know, if you don't want to print it yourself, if you want to provide it for kits and things, that's available there too. Then after we made these, because there were a number of things that we changed, for instance, the pattern is designed to use interfacing in this belt wrap, and we didn't really feel it was necessary since the um, cuddle has so much structure. It's also when you make this, you make it in three parts. And if you're using cotton fabric, excuse me, if you're using cotton fabric, there's a, a place underneath here where you turn the edges under so you don't have raw edges hanging out. Again, because you're using cuddle on here, you don't have to worry about that. So we cut the piece a little smaller and skipped turning the edges under. So there were enough little extra things that we wanted to tell people about. So we wrote a little one page um, cheat sheet kind of. I got it right here. Good. I've got one here. Too. So we've got that there and you'll find this. We did a blog post where we showed some of the things that we made and there's a link to that. And I understand that Shannon also has got a link to it on mm -hmm. their website. So yeah. that's available for you to, uh, to supplement the pattern and see all the things to do if you want to make this. Exactly. Exactly. So I think I think it's kind of cool because we're going to talk about a couple other things that you did that I didn't do and vice versa. Like, I think it's I think it's super interesting to sew the same sort of thing with someone else, like because yes. we are going to choose different ways of doing it. So that's yes. pretty great. Um, OK, so, yes, go to myannie.com. You can find the pattern. It's a free download. You can also find lots of other patterns. Um, and if you are a store, this is a great project to be able to have um, in store and do a, kind of a scrap buster with. So if you wanted to do a special like a make and take sort of class, this would be a great one to do too so um all right so i think we'll get to the sewing part now do you want me to show the giveaways real quick oh yes yes please all right so we um we were really excited um to provide three giveaways for today so three lucky winners are going to win a kit to make their own very um bosom buddy using the cuddle so we've included the pattern the cheat sheet the a piece of cuddle and we cut a half yard piece so you'll have leftovers for something else we put the soft and stable the interfacing if you choose to do it and a piece of velcro so we've got one that's made that would be perfect for a guy using the playtime cuddle we've got one that's made using the hope cuddle with the pink ribbons on it perfect for somebody maybe who's struggling with breast cancer and then a real fun glitzy one using the pink glitter so everything ready to go. So uh, I'm not sure, Teresa, how you do it. If you have people leave comments um, and then we'll get these on their way. Yeah. So, so you guys so have fun sewing. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, we'll have, if you are interested in winning the kit, you just need to share the video with your favorite sewing friends or groups, and you'll be entered to win it at the end. We will choose three winners. We'll announce those and get all their information. And then we'll send that information on to you, Annie. Okay. Sounds great. We can't wait awesome. to see it. And thank you so much right. for inviting thank you. me to join all you right. today. It's always fun Absolutely. to see you. We're happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya. All right. So let's move the cameras back around. Okay. Let's see if I can switch all this, all the stuff. I need to take myself out of places. Okay. We're good. I think we're good. Are we getting an echo? No. We're back. So good. See, every once in a while, it works. Yeah. Whew. Goodness. <laughs> All right. So the bosom buddy, we want to make it. I really do. I love this pattern. I think it's really good. I love, I love Annie. Okay. We just have like a big, like love fest for her. Hit that little love button. I really do. I think she's just great and she's super fun. And we, we had such a good time stopping and chatting with her and then just kind of brainstorming ideas for a while that we could, oh, we could do this and we could do that. And we could do that. So that's what we've done which is great. So let me put my extra patterns away. And then do you want to show them this again? Really close? Sure. So we get that. Doo -doo -doo. So you can see it totally fits the seatbelt yep, perfectly, which is great. Yep. Okay. Easy, it's kind of easy. a two handed. All thing. right. Yeah. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Easy. Just about to. I still have my, my red lines from where I drew the lines earlier. Oopsie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I never... th those are uh, heat. Or, They're heat or... ones. So I've never taken them downstairs to iron them. Got the marks it. off. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. what that is so that's the uh this is so this is a version with cotton on the top which is just a different version than what we're doing today all right but same idea and all of hers she did them the same fabric for all three parts and i did mine so that i used a the luxe cuddle for the backing i did a solid for the binding and then i did a cut cotton for the belt wrap so you could mix match do all sorts of fun things with it whatever you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you have scraps for. Your heart's or, desire. Yeah, your heart's desire. So, <laughs> or if you get a kit, whatever the kit includes. Okay. So let me show you again. The pattern is, this is the download. This is what you'll get when you download it. it sands the highlighted areas. That's really much just mine. But you'll get store paid pattern. Okay. It has, I have to show you this little thing here. So zoom in on this part right here. This is one of my favorite things about Annie patterns is she does this thing where she gives you little pieces that you can after you've cut it out, you can pin this to the piece that you did so you remember what the heck it was. Because it's really easy to forget. Like, I cut a piece of fabric that's this size. I don't know which part that was. You just put this on there, and it tells you. All right. Super good. If you haven't used her patterns yet, they're very well written. Very, um, I want to say inclusive. That's not the right word. That they, They're very all-encompassing. Everything you need is in the patterns. They're very good patterns. So there you go. Then you can get this little tip sheet also from her um, her website as well. If you go to the Shannon Fabrics blog, you'll be able to find the post for today's video. And it will include all of that, including the download link for that stuff. Okay. And that kind of encompasses all of the stuff for this pattern, as well as she has one about working with um, Minky Fabrics and her patterns. All right. So we're going to talk about a few of those things today. Let's get started. OK, so one of the things we're going to need to do, we get started with the back, the um, the soft part, the squishy part. I'm just going to keep my sample here. This squishy part is what we're going to start with. OK, the body of it. Um, one of the things that you're going to the thing that you're going to use that makes it extra cool. And what we've used in other projects is her soft and stable. So this is just a little chunk of it. I just want you to get the size, see if we can get the side view of it. It is. Uh, looks like a little less than a quarter of an inch, a little more than an eighth of an inch, maybe. Um, maybe the by Andy people can pop in and tell me how thick it is. But it is a sew-in foam stabilizer. So it has a kind of a knitish sort of stuff on either side and then the foam stabilizer inside. What that does, it's great for bags and all sorts of things because it gives it stiffness. So for this, for instance, this, if we just put interfacing in this, this would not stand up like this. It would not have the soft, the squishiness. Okay. The same with the, the iPad cover, that sort of thing. It gives it body that is really fabulous. So that is, and I will say that there are other versions of it and hers is so good. It's so um, easily sewable and uh, works very well to give body to all sorts of things. So just keep that in mind as you're doing other projects because it really does work for lots of things. So this one, we're gonna use this. 
we need to cut some pieces. One of the things in the pattern is she has you cut the foam stabilizer and cut the fabric and then put the two together. What I choose to do is I put the fabric and the stabilizer together and then we're gonna cut it out. So that's what we're gonna start with. Um, we're not gonna get through probably all of the pattern today, but I wanna show you some of the techniques that I used, not only with this one, but with other ones as well. Okay, so hold on. Let's see if I can move this over. Because guess what? We're spray basting. So I have my big old sheet here. I really should cut it down into like tabletop sizes. But then when I take it to classes, I want it big. So <laughs> I just have a big folded version right now. Okay. So here is my foam stabilizer. So here's my soft and stable. I have a big chunk. You want a piece that is, if I remember right, 14 by six and a half. Okay. Is what you're going to cut it down to. I've got a piece that's bigger than that. I just cut a bigger hunk of it, and that's what I'm gonna use first, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this back, and I'm gonna use, oh, you know what we did? We didn't go through our ingredients. Let's do that really quick. Sorry, Michael. Let's see if we can pull that up. There and we go. And we're back. Ingredients list, because we want, this, we want to use the, uh, the basing spray. So we're gonna want about a half of yard of Cuddle 3, or a print, or a mix, like we talked about, a Cuddle or Lux Cuddle, whatever you would like to do. The bosom buddy pattern, which you can get from byannie.com. You're gonna want a rotary cutter, the 9014 stretch needle because we're working with cuddle, which is a knit fabric, felt tip marker, the flower head pins, of course, from Clover, fusible woven interfacing. I'm using Pellon SF101, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And we talked a little with Annie about using this um, the interfacing or not. Um, hook and loop tape, which is often known by the brand name Velcro, uh, micro serrated scissors. I have them from all these different brands from Mori Kai and Karen K. Buckley. I love them all. Polyester thread. Today I'm using Metro Scenes uh, or Metro Scene from Mettler. And I'm using it in white today with the blue fabric because I want you to see it. So uh, self-healing cutting mat, of course. Soft and stable. The foam stabilizer we were just talking about from By Annie. The stiletto and pressing tool from By Annie as well. And Wonder Tape from Dritz, which is optional. And I didn't get the OD505 spray on there. So that too. Add that to the bottom, okay? <laughs> so you'll want to use the 505 spray too. That list was going to get it was going to run right off the screen if I wasn't careful. So I had to stop. That's really that was it. We were at a that's room. really not the excuse. Not, not, that's not it. <laughs> but it's true. Okay, so we're going to use the OD if I can get the lid off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray the um, stabilizer. You can spray the back of the fabric. I like to spray whatever is down. Um, I'm just going to spray a little bit and get it stuck on there. I like to do this thing when I use the stabilizer where I kind of roll it out because that seems to work better for me than if I try to lift it. And then I'm just going to pat it down. Okay. One of the things about the um, 505 spray, which I uh, one, it doesn't stink, right, Hawk? I, I can't smell it at all. And I'm right here. Yeah. Does not smell, which I love. It's also washable. So once you, um, if you wash this, it'll come out. It's not going to be sticky and weird. And so it's good for all sorts of things, including spray basting your quilts. The other thing I like about it is that um, it's really easily sticky. So I don't have to spray a lot. Okay. And when I spray it and I spray down, I can actually feel like it's cool underneath. If you get little wet spots on there, that is definitely you spraying too much. Okay, so you want to just do a thin little web. You can't really see it on this or otherwise I'd have you show them. Okay, but smacking it down is kind of a weird thing, but actually makes it stick much better. So if you just kind of lay it out and then hope for the best, it doesn't work as well. So make sure that you tap it down. Okay, and it should feel kind of cool to the touch when you're doing that. All right, so now it's fused and they're just gonna act as one. I'm gonna get rid of my sticky sheet, okay? All right, so I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna make my marks on here and I'm gonna mark my piece that is 14 by 16 and then cut it out, okay? This is easier for me because then I just make sure that things are where they should be. Okay. Let's see how close I got it to not being big enough. <laughs> Pretty close. I'm pretty There's good nothing at that. in that that uh, in the Odif 505 spray that deteriorates the soft and stable at all, and in fact, actually, it completely is water soluble and washes out. Yeah, it's right. great. It's yeah. really it's good stuff. Okay, so this is my six and a half. Look how close I got it there, huh? I'm so good at that. It's supposed to be 14 inches. 
So the 15 is where 14 inches is right now. <laughs> I was like, I'll just hunk out. Get out of the hunk. It'll be fine. It's barely fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is I marked here my half inch and then my six inch. If I had a six you and a half inch. Playing chicken. I really do. Like whatever kind of fabric chicken, bobbin chicken, thread chicken, do it all. Um, <laughs> so what I did is I marked a half an inch here and brought it over. If you have one of the fancy rulers that's six and a half, this is a great way of just measuring it out on both sides at one time. Okay, I'm going to move this over here. And I'm going to cut out all of my pieces at once. And now all of my pieces are exactly the same size. And I'm not trying to match up two different pieces. See how that so close. Okay. And I'm just trying to square this up. So you, if you can see along the bottom here, I'm lining up this line right across the bottom so that I'm getting it nice and straight and then matching up my side. Okay. Because as you'll notice, the mark that the Sharpie makes on it is pretty wide. So I want to make sure that I'm still getting pretty straight. So if I followed my line exactly, it wouldn't have been square on the corner, but I followed the ruler instead because the ruler is much squarer. And do the same thing up here. I'm going to get this along a cut line. Okay. There we go. All right. So then I can throw all of these little scraps away. Right. Okay. So now I've got my piece here. It is 14 by six and a half, which is exactly what I'm supposed to have according to the pattern. Okay. So on, let me turn this so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Pardon my highlighting. These are all the pieces I had to cut along here. Okay. We, she talks about in the pattern that she didn't cut. Um, she did four and a half for both of the pieces instead of 10 by five. This one is 10 by four and a half as well. Um, the belt wrap B. And you can find that in this paperwork. It tells you all of that stuff that she did differently. Okay. One of the things that I did is that I um, also fused my interfacing on before I cut it. So I actually like using the interfacing. I like the stability that it gives me. So I do that before I cut it as well. Okay. So now on here, we're going to find, so we've gotten our, our, cu our cushion prepared. We did the cushion back and then we need to do the cushion front. All right, and then we're going to pretend this is the cushion front because I've got another piece and we're going to um, make these marks. So one of the things about using Cuddle with her patterns is because she does a lot of this where you measure in this far, and you measure in this far and you make marks. That's harder to do on Cuddle. On this one, on the cotton, you can see that that's absolutely what I did as I used my uh, friction pen, my red felt tip marker, and I just marked right along here. I guess if I open it up even further, you can see. The red marks here that I used to do my stitching lines. On Cuddle, that's not going to work as nicely. So we have a couple of different techniques that you can use for marking your Cuddle to, so that you can get those, those lines accurate. All right. One of them, and I need to get my paper so I can see what it is I'm supposed to mark here. Okay. Is two and an eighth over. Yes. Okay. So I've got my two inches, my eighth, mark it along the edge. One of the things I can do is I can use my little stiletto and I can draw a little line right on there. Okay. I will say that on the print, it is harder to see. There it is. Okay. You see it? So you, we'll show you on the solid and you can see it really well. So the other thing that you can do is I can do this line. I can see it okay, but it's going to be a while until I get to the point that I'm actually using this line. So I'm just going to stick some blue tape on here. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing here. This one is two and a quarter. Okay. So I'm going to do it two and a quarter. Draw my little line. See if I can kind of scratch it there. Okay. The Bionese stiletto is so multi-purpose. <laughs> it really is. It's perfect for this one. Okay. Okay. So I measure that again, make sure that's right. Yep, two and a quarter. Okay. So now I'm going to be lazy. And if I were doing this on cotton, I would mark all the four sides. With this one, I'm just going to do these two because then I can get this piece to go in here and it will fit up. Okay. 
All right. So that's one way. Well, that was two ways to mark it, but I'm going to show you the other one. That'll be easier. Okay. So we're going to set this aside. Um, well, the other thing we need to do, which I will show you, is you're going to um, go ahead and stitch all the way around here. So this one I've stitched and I've cut the corners. Okay, at the end is where she usually has you cut the corners and I did it earlier because then I want to put these together. I'll show you when we get over there to that part. Okay. And that's just a zigzag stitch around It's the just edge. a zigzag. So in the pattern, she says to do it an eighth of an inch straight stitch. I just do a zigzag all the way around because it's easier for me to keep track of the edge that way, like because of the cuddle and the thickness of it. I just choose to do a zigzag the whole time. Okay. So we've gotten our... This is our front. We've got it ready. We've got the placement lines. So we're going to take care of that, set it aside for right now. All right. Then we're going to make the belt wrap. So the belt wrap is the part that goes around the actual seat belt. So when Annie did it, she did it without any uh, interfacing at all, which you can absolutely do. I kind of like the way the interfacing makes it stiff. So I choose to do the interfacing. So I use the Pellon SF101, which is a woven interfacing. And I fused it to the fabric and then I cut the pieces out. It's the easiest way to keep it accurate and um, works very well for me. You can absolutely iron minky fabrics. You just need to use a medium heat on your iron and not touch the front of the fabric. So always be ironing from the back of the fabric and it will work totally fine. I really like using the interfacing personally because I like the stability that it gives it. And it lets me sew it kind of like it's just... Um, like canvas or something like it's a it's a thicker cotton at that point but it moves like cotton it works like cotton it doesn't stretch anymore so i actually really like the interfacing you're absolutely welcome to not use it because you won't really need it the other thing is you will make it <clears throat> excuse me you can make it so that your two pieces are the same size wish i had my other piece so these two are the same size i've cut them both at 10 by four and a half in the pattern, the original one, it has you cut an extra half an inch on one side and turn it over and do um, a little a hem along one side. You don't really need to do that because that hem actually ends up behind this. So in cotton, you need to do it so that you can stop the fraying from happening. In cuddle, you don't need to do it at all, and it just adds another thickness if you do. Okay? So making the belt wrap. Again, we're going to measure things. Okay, let me get the right piece. Here we go. So here's my big piece. This piece is uh, the 10 by 8 piece, if I remember correctly. And we need to measure it and put the Velcro on. So I have a couple of tips on this one. So on here, I need to measure it 3 eighths of an inch from this edge. I'm going to go ahead and measure that. Okay, this, the stiletto works amazing on look at that oh yeah way better contrast way than on, better than on the print you can I absolutely see, see it no problem okay up top an inch and a quarter and those lines are just going to go away because they're just pushing all i did is push the nap in the other direction so you can see on this way you see how it, i don't know if you can tell that it's much like denser it's because i've pushed all the nap this direction on this one i've gone sideways so the nap isn't as ruffled does that make sense sure so this one like pushing it backwards makes it very visible even when you're not pushing it backwards it's very um, easy to see all right so got super, it super clever way of doing that i think um non-destructive non-destructive it's great method. so right because i don't have to i don't have to iron that out i don't have to spritz it with water or nothing it's just gonna it's just gonna go away once i give it a little a little rub there okay so then we're gonna put on our piece of velcro so the velcro should be cut uh, i think it's seven and a half inches and you want to cut that at the same time so i cut both both um sides of it the hook and the loop part so this is the loop part which is the soft part the hook part is the scratchy part that grabs onto it so um, if you ever, I remember the first time I was like, hook and loop, what is that? Um, but that's all it is. Okay. We often know it by a brand name. <laughs> okay. So hook and loop tape. Got it here. This is my wonder tape. So the pattern, she says that you can use a little bit of glue, which you totally could. But I really like the way that the wonder tape holds onto cuddle. So I'm just going to put some on the back of here some scissors 
snip that off. Okay, so this is Wonder Tape. It's a product from Dritz, and it is a double-sided tape that washes away. So this isn't something that's necessarily going to get washed a bunch, but if it gets washed, the stickiness will go away. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down. You want to see more that the stiletto is really good uh, for? Oh, yeah. I think this is the fifth, the fifth use for this project. Yeah, Love it's great. It. It's great if I can get this to, to snap down. There we go. Okay. Holds that little wonder tape in place. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to line it up with those lines that I drew on my fabric and just put it into position. Okay. And now it just stays in place. Much, much easier than trying to pin it in position, which does not work, um, especially doing it through cuddle and Velcro would be terrible. The glue will work okay, but what I found is sometimes the glue likes to sit on top so that the things will still kind of shimmy at the very top of the, the nap. So this one leaves it, like makes it stick a little bit wider, and I really like that. So another use for Wonder Tape. We use it for zippers a lot, and I like it for all sorts of things okay so let's come over and sew just a little bit we're going to sew around this one of the things that i definitely recommend is that you use um the non-fused whatever they call it, like not sticky back velcro okay so you mm. can buy velcro that's sticky back already don't use it what it does is it sticks to your needles and it's kind of an obnoxious um tackiness that it leaves it. So I'm actually going to leave this at a 2.5 stitch length because I want it to hold this really tight. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way around. I'm still using my 9014 stretch needle because I'm sewing on the cuddle. And I've done this a few times and I haven't noticed any issues with it um, sewing weirdly or skipping stitches or anything like that. So I'm sticking with that 9014 stretch and I'm just going to come all the way around. And I'm sewing in that little edge. It's about an eighth of an inch kind of little edge in there I'm using the digital dual feed on my uh, crescendo. My guess is it would probably work okay with your regular foot, but a walking foot's always recommended. Oh, look at that. Let there be light. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. Okay. I'm going to come back around. So the Velcro on this guy is going to get used a lot because as you saw, it's a, it's a big hunk of Velcro and it really sticks together and as we have to use like the two hands to get it to come off. So what that means to me, and it's also in the pattern, is that you need to really stitch this down. So we're actually going to go around this twice. Oh. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and stitch it really good so that if there's any tugging, pulling, whoops, I went off just a little there. I looked away. Um, it'll, it'll stay on there because the last thing you want is to try to fix this. Really. Stitch it right in the first place. So stitch around all the way. Okay, we're going to do this with both pieces of the belt. What were you laughing about? I don't even remember me. now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I was thinking, oopsie. Oopsie. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> I can't really see where I went off, though, so it must not have been too bad. Oh, there it is. Just, I'm not, just the tiniest I'm little bit. Say, I'm not going for it. Okay. Just like, but you can't really tell, so it's fine. Okay, right. so I've gone around twice. Now this Velcro can get a lot of tugging and pulling, and it's not going to um, break loose, which is not fun to fix, and I've had to try to fix Velcro before. It's not my favorite okay so we've got the piece here this is my big piece i'm going to do the exact same thing which i already did to the other piece okay so the measurements are all on here Oops. measurements are all on here doing the exact same thing with this piece okay now we're going to put the pieces together so let me measure this one because i want to make sure i've got it in the right Okay, so this should be one and three quarter inches over. So that one looks like it's a little short. Is it this side? Is? Can't see with the light very well. Okay, I think it was this side. I think I just got to shimmy just a little bit. What's going on with the nap? There it is. 
Do we get the nap? I did. No, I actually looked at it yesterday when I was sewing this little guy. So the nap is going this direction. This is the right way. So it's they're a little bit. Um, one side is a slightly bigger than the other. You can kind of see it here. See one side is slightly bigger. Got it. I just want to make sure a, I had it right. A little bit offset. Because I will say that I sewed it completely wrong the first time. <laughs> and then the velcro doesn't match up at all when you try to put it on and i didn't realize that until i got the entire thing assembled which was frustrating <laughs> okay so this is c so that's going to go on this direction okay this one's going to go on this direction oops i should check my nap right okay nap's going the right direction i'm going to sew it on here okay so because we're sewing with cuddle and cuddle likes to do some funky things i'm going to sew i'm, I'm going to pin my corners first just so it can't move too much all right so i'm going to pin a corner turn this around it's a little nicer right now because the you have the stabilizer in both layers too mm -hmm. right so yeah so it's not going to go too many places but i just want to make sure that those corners are stable and then i can pin in between and it's going to be just fine Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of pins. And because it's stabilized, I'm actually just going to pin uh, vertically a couple of times here and not do the double pinning. I don't really need to because it's not going to shimmy as much. All right. Now I am going to come over here and pin this down and then pin my other one in place. All right. This I found that if I am trying to keep three layers which is what will be here in um, position all together at the same time, I'm usually going to lose one of them. So I'm going to pin two layers together and then these three layers together. Okay. But it's going to keep that bottom one exactly where I want it to be mm, when mm -hmm. I'm sewing around here. Okay. Sorry, I can't see my pins. I'm grabbing blindly. I probably shouldn't pin with a dull needle. It's not going to work as well. All right, so same idea over here. Okay, where is that doll needle? Because it just keeps getting in my way. This is what happens. Whoa. <laughs> I, was, I was like, you need to just go away. Because all the pins get stabbed <laughs> through the thread is what was happening. <laughs> it was not working in my benefit. I was making the... um. That little stuffed animal for our quilt parlor class. Oh, yeah, yeah. The one with the vintage buttons. Exactly. Cal All right. Cal so calico? It's a calico bear. Calico mm -hmm. bear. He's adorable. Yeah. If you want to know what we're talking about, here, we were talking about it on uh, the I Love Cuddle group. I don't think we've mentioned today. So I Love Cuddle is a great Facebook group if you're not a part of it yet. And it's for people who all love sewing with cuddle fabrics and it's a great place to be inspired and to get feedback on your stuff and get questions answered and specifically look for i love cuddle fabric yeah it's yes. super great all right so now we're going to go and we're going to take and sew this all the way around the edges okay so all, right. all of them we're going to do it with a quarter inch seam allowance and i'm going to start in just a little bit just because sewing at the starting at the corners a little uh a little dicier, and I don't want to take my pin out there yet. Okay, so I'm just going to take these out as I go. Getting close. Remember, take your pins out before you sew on them. Okay. So normally when I come to a corner, I'm going to backstitch and make it stronger, but we're actually going to trim up these corners later. So I'm going to move this over just the tiniest bit because I'm trying to get a quarter inch seam. Okay, but we're going to trim these corners and make them circular. Well, not circular, but curved. So I'm just going to do a regular, regular one right now. And just you basically just, yeah, you just pivot on the needle. Yeah, got it. I'm just pivoting instead of trying to trying to reinforce. You're right, that's different than usual. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a place where my little stiletto is going to come in handy to hold it. I want to hold it down as it comes underneath here. The same here, because I have to take this pin out now and I can use my stiletto to just hold it as it goes underneath the foot. Okay, so it's not going to come flying forward like it often wants to do. 
once you take that pin out. Okay. So, all right. One more. Lift and turn again. Okay. So, this one, once we've got it sewn all the way around, then we're going to go ahead and trim it. So, I need to get up here. I am going to turn that corner. Because remember, I started in just a little bit. I'm going to get up to where we're going to cross paths and cut my thread. All right. So then let's bring it over here. So this is something that uh, Annie does in a lot of her patterns where she makes the corners rounded, which is a kind of an easier way to bind things. And it also makes it so you never get the weird little dog ears that will get on the sides of things like that. I don't know how to explain, but <laughs> it's one of those things that will annoy me um, is that these will start, these get just bunged up more often. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's more leverage um, out there. There's more leverage out there. So if you kind of curve these corners, you, you lose that opportunity to have it be weird, which is great. So in the pattern, on the back of the pattern, if I can center it page, and this is the way it is, and she will have templates for you. So a two and a half inch template I found out is... I can get this off again. The exact size of my Odif lid, just so you know. Oh, well, that's fancy. I tried to find something else that was working for the three and a half, <laughs> but I couldn't, so I made my own templates. Um, so I just copied these and then put a little bit of tape on them because that's what I do. But you can make templates or you can use your Odif lid for a two and a half inch circle, just so y'all know. So I made a template. I copied this. I left the three and a half inch hole, traced another one of this. And I'm going to use it over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to line this up. And we're going to trace it. And I want to see. So it's like I'm going to mark all the round, cut along the marked lines to round each corner. Okay. So that's what I want to make sure. Because I've always been doing it so that I've lined up the edge and the edge here. And if I look in the pattern, that's what it looks like she's doing, right? Yeah, Can you see that? I do. It is. I think it's interesting that you you go ahead and sew all the way around with it, uh, all the way around the full rectangle, and you really get every layer together. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and you modify the corners. Right. I think that's a great uh, a great note. It's a great way to get it a little bit more accurate, I think, um, and to keep things kind of in check a little bit. It will do it so that all of your seams are stronger too, because you're going to go around it again which is great. So at this point, you can use this edge and, um, and sew your corners, or you can cut them off. I like to cut them off. So I cut them off and then sew back around. You could use it because you know how sometimes we mark our sewing our line and then we use that as the raw edge. This one, I'm actually going to cut it first before I sew it. So I'm cutting the stitching and it's going to come loose there. So we're going to go ahead, cut this, and then I'll take it back and sew it. Okay. This just helped me see that, see the edge a lot better. I tried to do it otherwise, and it wasn't as good. So we're going to go ahead and stitch over the whole thing again. This way, if you've gotten any crooked seams, you can go back and fix them. And if you didn't get any crooked seams, you're just going to reinforce the seam that you already had. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to start to curve it, and I'm going to try to follow this curve. I can't see it, but what I'm trying to do is get that curve so that it's a quarter of an inch away as it has heads under here okay. doesn't she make that look easy isn't that ridiculous <laughs> so I'm it'll be just fine it'll be fine it up there <laughs> the very yeah. few times that i have tried to sew anything and i know that what she just did is actually magic <laughs> okay. i'll run right off the edge Every time. It's easy to do until you've had some practice. That's it, right? It's just practice. Just practice. And maybe a little bit of magic. <laughs> okay, or maybe the magic is practice. I think it probably is. Okay. So I will say that trying to get a quarter inch seam on a curve is not my favorite thing to do. It's not always easy. So my corners are often a little, like, slightly wonky. And that's okay. Okay, a couple little stitches back stitching 
it's not the only seam, so I'm not super worried about how that's going to be. All right, so now, so see, this isn't perfect right there. So I'm going to trim that down just a little bit because I would rather trim it down than to um, clip curves. And this way we want it to, to turn nicely. So this is actually why I had tested, like, would it be easier to sew with that as the pretend raw edge? Oh, yeah. Because then I would only have to quick trim this once, but it wasn't. So, but again, like we were talking about with Annie, this, you know, your, your experience, your mileage may vary. Your experience will be different than mine. So give them a shot. And yet you are definitely trying out all of the things that, that, uh, you know, I'm trying all the options. <laughs> I'm you're, trying you're, you're to exercising try all the, all the options and giving us your best, your best method. I am giving it a shot. Okay, so we're going to turn this inside out. If I stretch this real hard, you can see that there's white thread in there. Maybe, mm. yeah, barely. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so you know, you can use matching thread or not. All right. So at this point, in the pattern, of course, she's going to tell you to go iron it because normally you'd be using cotton and you'd want to press this really good with cuddle you don't and you can't so don't go press it um she also says that you don't need to top stitch it and you don't i will say that i there's there are pros and cons okay we're just going to show this again so um that kind of untake take out part of my next step out here all right so this is one that i did before you can see my little sewing lines that i've scratched in here Okay, and this one I tried to do a little top stitch. It's difficult to get a nice even top stitch. Okay, it's not my favorite. So we're gonna try it with this one using my, oh, it's right underneath here. Oops, um, <laughs> I'm like, where did I put it? Oh, it's still on the table. We're gonna try it using the stitch in the ditch foot. And mostly because I just wanna try it with you guys and see how it works. Okay, because eyeballing it is difficult and cuddle likes to, to shift. So the only reason I want to stitch that down is so that it would just sit nicer because it will work just fine. It'll come over here and it would attach, but I feel like this will be kind of loosey and a little, I don't know. I want to say weird, not necessarily weird. The, you know, the part of me that likes to be piggy wants it top stitched. All right. So we're going to try top stitching it. So the one thing that I did notice though, is that this likes to shimmy back here. So I'm going to pin it down because the twos like to spread open. Oh yeah. Does that make sense? I see that. So I'm gonna get this, get this and pin it through here. Okay. When I was trying this before, I stabbed myself really good on that pin. So there's fair warning. <laughs> warning. All right. Okay, and I, if I remember right, other things I learned, this is your outside edge where your skinny little or the Velcro edge is right there. That skinny bit. This is the part that's going to be on the outside that you're going to see, <clears throat> which means this part is going to be hidden. So that's where I want to start sewing. Where it will be hidden and people won't notice it quite as quickly. All right. So the stitch in the ditch foot is super cool because it has this little uh, this little edge. OK. Yep. I'm going to see how close I can get. You see that? It's really hard to see. The light is terrible. Maybe it's because the it's dark yeah. fabric. Okay, so that little that little edge in there right. will give me a guide. Um, this is going to be a faster move. I'm going to come around the other side because I actually know that there's a, a way to to see that from here. Okay, so I have scooted my needle over. I'm going to scoot it over just a little bit more, or a little bit less is actually what I want. Sorry. Okay. All right. Now that we've shown what that looks like from the side, okay. I'm going to come back around. Okay. okay. You can you can sit, watch for just a second if you want to. So I'm just stitching this with the white thread. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm just going to stitch all yeah. the way around using that as a guide because I wanted you to see if you could see the, the um, thread as it comes out the other side for the top stitching and how it looked. I'm just gonna get it real slow around this corner. Yeah, so it for can somebody try to who's be... usually pedal to the metal. I'm I'm real impressed by how slow you're going right now. <laughs> well, because sometimes I want it to be neat, and we're gonna see if that helped. I will say, top stitching uh, rounded corners is not 
the easiest. Okay, right. so as this gets kind of stuck, go. I'm lift my foot, get that in there. All right, and we're gonna keep stitching. Okay, so I just use that little bar as my guideline as I'm going around this corner. I will say that the stiletto is super nice too because I have so much control over it. So if I kind of grab the fabric, I can move it around like I want it to be. Okay, I'm gonna come out to another corner. I'm gonna try it again. By the fourth corner, it's gonna probably be pretty good, I think. Either that or I will have given up and been like, nope, it's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because really, it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? Okay, come back around here. Okay, I'm gonna come back to where I started, do a little back stitch there, and cut my thread. Now, what I think is funny is that this is white thread. It's like seriously one of my favorite things about cuddle. It's white thread on navy fabric, and it's not. I don't know where it's at. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. There's my little thread tails. I'll cut those off. You can um, avoid this, just so you know, if you have better habits of holding your thread tail when you start. That's what causes this, is I forget to hold my thread tails when I start sewing. So you can avoid that. All right. So there we go. That one's not too bad. It's a little better stitched with that foot. So it's going to come. Doo -doo -doo. I can't remember exactly how it goes. It works every time. So I'm like, I'm just going to trust, trust the process. There we go. That's how it works. See, every time I just like, really, I'm like, I don't know where it goes. The thing to remember, this goes down, of course. Remember, because that's going right. to be hidden behind. All right. So there's the two different samples. It works. Okay. You've got your pieces. Now we're going to take this piece that we did before. Okay. And we want to get this centered here. So the piece is going to, you get it marked. Let me find the paper. And then we're going to mark vertical lines at two and five eighths and four and seven eighths. Okay, so here we've got two and a half, a little bit more. So two and five eighths. Is that what I said? Yes. Sorry, I have to read the pattern again. This is where I can put my little lines. And oops. Four and seven eight. So that's it. There's a an issue with the sticky, huh? Here, there you go. Stay there. One, two, three, four, and seven eighths, which is just about the end. Okay. So now this line needs to go on that line right there. And that's where I'm gonna stitch it. So at this point, I'm going to get this down as flat as possible. I'm looking at my line here, my line here. So we can get that straight because I know my tape is straight. Okay, and I'm going to pin through all these layers, which is a lot, I will say. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to straighten this up and I'm going to pin over here so that I can just do that square in one fell swoop. I guess it's a triangle, isn't it? Okay, I hit the Velcro. That doesn't work as well. <laughs> okay, so when we're sewing with all of these layers with the cuddle, I will say that at this point I can I can go through here and I can um, I can pin through all the layers with my clover pins. So even if I just barely catch on the other side, it's totally fine. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and stitch all the way. Oops, this got crooked just a little. Hold on. Cross the top there. I noticed it because I didn't double check. There we go. 
All right, now we'll go stitch those lines. I keep hitting that Velcro. Okay, I um I need to bring up. Die? Oh yeah, it might. We're okay. we're down to four percent battery oh, right great. now, and I hate to rush you, but some things. Have, you know, I'm I'm thinking that maybe this, <laughs> that I've need... had this phone for a long enough now that the battery life is starting to go on it. Mm -hmm. So we are. Okay. So know. I'm gonna tell you how to stitch this then. Okay. <laughs> burr, burr, burr. You're just gonna stitch all the way around. Okay. This I will show you. You can see it doesn't really want to move very much. Okay, and it's because we've got a lot of layers. So I've got a hand in the back. You want to show that real quick? Okay, I've got a hand back here holding onto my fabric, bringing it through. Okay, and then you can see it moves just fine. We want to do that. We're going to stitch all the way around in that little square. All right. Let me take it out. I'll show you. Oops. Okay, so then... Okay, we're gonna rush it. Because the last thing we want is that to die in the middle of it. Okay, once we've gotten this all the way around, you're gonna you can zigzag the whole thing. You could have done this before, and then you're gonna use your three and a half template to do the same thing. I'd like to not rush you. I have an idea. Okay. Can I put the can I put the camera down for a minute and I'm sure. going to go get a brick? Okay, let me uh, just I hold have this. it right there. Okay. okay. There you go. So you mostly see. Oh, your sorry. Hand. Sorry guys, that was my hand. Um, <laughs> all right. So what I want to what I want to show you though is what I like to do is I, I'll stitch this on. We'll go back and do it, um, but we're going to put keep one of them whole and one of them curved, and then we'll make the two curves match. Okay. So what I found is it charging now? It is, does not appear to be. Nope, oh, there it goes. Yes, yes, yes. Whew. Okay, we're back. We're down to three percent. That was yeah, pretty was... exciting. Okay, so then let's finish that. You're playing battery chicken. Yes, you. <laughs> That's the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was silly because I played for red chicken. Okay, so let's try it again. We'll get all the way around because I would like to show this part. Good. Okay, come over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Give it a little pull. If you can't um, grab it very well, I will say that your stiletto will come in handy for that. Okay. We're just going to follow that line. And if my stitches aren't super even here, I don't really care because it doesn't make any difference. They're just going to hide in the cuddle. Okay. If your machine has a hard time moving through this, what I would suggest is that you sew one side then sew the other one in the same direction. Um, mostly because I can see that this shoved it just a little bit. So it won't be quite as square as I want it to be. And my machine plows through it pretty well. So if your machine has a little issue, sewing down, then sewing down, and then sewing your top might be better. Okay? Mm. Did that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. So now, take the pins out. Got my piece. It's going to come over. Fold my little strap in there, right? Okay. Look what I did. <laughs> I love when I do this. Check the nap, except don't check the nap. Oh, did I get it right? Oh my gosh, that was so lucky. I thought it was not upside down. <laughs> you had a 50-50 shot. I had a 50-50 shot. We got it. Nap chicken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've gotten it so that the two layers are done. Like I said, you can zigzag this. The basting spray keeps it pretty well, but sometimes it'll come loose. Okay. Which can be a little bit frustrating. So if you do the little zigzag, that will help that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this on here. And we're going to sew it. That tape is really sticky. What was really sticky? That tape. Oh, it left. Is it, did it leave? No, it's just sticking to everything. Oh, so every time, every oh, time it's my hand, around. Okay, I was every like, time my hand gets near tape. it. That better not leave residue on the cuddle. No, okay, it good. did not. It just was sticking to my hand as soon as it got that close. <laughs> got it. Okay, so I'm going to use my Wonder Clips here. We talked about using little fabric clips. That's what these are. So the Wonder Clips are fabulous for using with the By Annie projects because you have all this foam stabilizer. Trying to pin through that. The Clover pins, I will say they get through it, but it will distort it. So you do want to use the, the Wonder Clips here for a bunch of this to hold it a little bit better and not as likely to stab yourself. All right. You can definitely double check um, whether how wide the seat belt 
is in your vehicle, but I'm fairly certain that they're standard. I at one point thought maybe a regular seatbelt wasn't going to fit into this sleeve, and it totally did. It, yeah. So it, it, it there's a little bit of an optical illusion. I think that most seatbelts are standardized. Okay. So I'm actually going to open that. Sort of slide under better. Okay, so I'm going to stitch these two together. Okay, and I'm going to put it on a big zigzag. Okay, here. So I'm just going to try to make here. it as easy zigzag. as possible. Because all... We have a five and a five. All yep, right. I'm just doing a big zigzag. And really, because my whole point right now is to get these two to be stuck together. So I'm not trying to do a certain seam allowance or anything. I just want them to work as one. It's basically, all, you're almost basting, basting them together. I'm basting them together because the next step is that we're going to, well, we'll trim this and then we will have to bind it. So we'll show some of the binding as well. Okay, so I'm going to sew it from this side, obviously, so I can see that curve. Okay, if you wanted to, you could just do a straight stitch with this and it would be fine as well. I just like the zigzag because it moves through fast and easy. Okay, where it gets a little hard, I can use this little stiletto. It's catching. Sorry. What was that? I just like pushed too hard. Oh, oh, it was just a rev. You just revved. I just revved the boom, engine. Boom. <laughs> Got it. Okay, I'll make sure that that is out of my way. I was really like, what was happening is that transferring of pushing with my hand transferred to my foot, and I pushed hard on the pedal instead of pushing hard up here. That totally <laughs> happens. It's like you know, patting your patting your belly and right. rubbing your tummy at the same time. Patting right. your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't do it right. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so I want to make sure. I'm just going to keep an eye on this. Make sure that my my edges are together. You might keep going. Okay, and I will say it's definitely not a five and a five because it does that. Oh, that's what it is on the machine, but that's not what it's ending up as. Right, because it's not feeding through as fast as I want it to got because it. it's got these two thick layers. And you'll see I've got a hand back here holding on in the back. I just kind of keep guiding it through. Okay, it isn't hard to sew through. It's just thick. It sews through the, the stabilizer super nicely. It's just a lot to get under the foot. Okay, almost back around. I will um, admit that when I, the first couple of projects that I did, well, the, I think the first big one, I think I did like a bop, a dot bag or something uh, of one of her patterns, like just a really simple little pattern. Oh, it was the pencil bag that she has. That was one of the first ones that I did. And then I did one that is called A Place for Everything. And if any of you are um, big Annie fans, you know that one. And she says in there to stitch down with use a zigzag along the edges before you do the binding. And I thought that was too much work. And so I tried to do it without it. And I will say it is a game changer in how well your machine will be able to sew the stabilizer the next time around. Because, let's see if I can get this out. Do you see how that smashes that? And makes it super flat. Okay, so normally, well, you can see behind it how thick it is. Okay, it, normally it's this thick right there and it smashes it down to that. Okay, so this makes it much easier to deal with once it's smashed flat and the zigzag is what will do that. So you could stitch it around once with the regular but then stitch it down with the zigzag and smush it real good. Okay, so now I can go ahead and I can trim these corners so that they're basically the same. I try not to take out too many of my stitches, but it could happen. Okay. So they're not perfectly equal, and I don't really care. Okay, so we've trimmed off our corners, and now the two match. So that's how I get the two to match. When I did it the first time, I tried to do each one of them, and then because the corners are hard to get exactly the same, they didn't match at all, and I had to retrim it. So save yourself the extra effort and wait. Okay, so now at this point, we've got our little wrap 
we can do, but we have to trim it. Okay, so let's talk binding. So normally when we do this, what I want to do is I want to do one part. Time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I want to do one part with the half inch seam allowance and one part with the quarter inch seam allowance because um, I think that it's an interesting thing to do on here. It's just slightly. Uh, and first thing we need to do is figure out which side is going to be the top. This is, um, for me, this is the top when we're doing the binding. This to me is the top because this is the part that I want it to look really nice. Okay, so I'm going to sew the, the binding onto the back and bring it around to the front. All right, so let's do one. We'll do a little bit and around a curve on the half inch. And then we'll try it with a quarter. Okay, so in, in the pattern, she tells you to start about an inch. We'll leave, leave a tail and then st start sewing about an inch above the corner. Okay, and then as you work your way around, you're going to stop here. And you're going to make these ends meet in the binding, however you want to do it. All right. There's lots of ways we can do it. We have a whole video about binding with Cuddle that will tell you about that stuff. You can find it on YouTube and maybe they can get the link up there for you. That will tell you a little bit more about combining those ends in the pattern. She just says, do it how you want to, basically. Okay. But I thought it was really good advice to leave, to start here, stop here, and then you have a nice big gap to get that closed. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this just a little bit. Well, I'm not going to pin. I'm just going to pin the first one. And then I'm going to bring this around and clip a few of them. And we'll work our way around. Okay, we're going to do this with a half inch. So this is going to be a completely unusable project when we're done. Oh, because you're gonna do you're gonna try out you know, your seam allowance, uh, not versus her seam allowance, and her seam allowance right. to see. Um, if there's any noticeable difference. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Because you. I think Got it. that the big difference, because I did it on a straight seam and didn't find a whole lot of difference with it. Um, but what I think the difference is, is on that corner. Okay. So I'm actually going to switch this around. I'm going to put it on a straight stitch and, um, and then I'm going to use a three stitch length. And then I need to get this over so that it's at a half an inch seam allowance. Okay. Gonna open that drawer. Do you see it's coming? I was gonna say, I think I actually just saw the whole machine move. <laughs> <laughs> Might have. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't bode well for how much you're, uh, how much pressure you're putting on your needle. Well, I, I, no, because the whole machine is moving and not just the needle. Well, that's okay. I think. I don't know. We'll see if my needle breaks. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take Only this out. Only if you're dragging it across the table from right. the back. Right, and it, right, and I don't, I don't really. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to hold this down and I'm just going to kind of twist as I go here. So this was the part that I was like, this isn't as easy with the half inch because of the curve here. So I have to get it. So it kind of way under. Very well. Yeah. Sorry, I'm really blind here. Okay, there I'm going to back up a little bit. I think I can there we go. Everybody can still see what's going okay. on now. And now I can see a little and better. You can see better too? Yeah, that's it's much about. better. Okay. <laughs> so now once we're doing a straight, straight, it's really pretty darn easy. But then we're going to do, we'll see if I can do it this way without the pins. Sometimes I have an easier time just holding the fabric with my fingers, um, weirdly, because most of the time that's not the case. But sometimes, like on weird curves like this, I have an easier time. Well, with and that. that stiletto just gets you right in there. It totally does. It gives me a way to be able to hold onto it really tightly and not let the fabric away from the edge, which is the key. Because if I were just trying to hold it with my fingers, it really would not work. But the stiletto lets me hold it right over here on the edge. Really nicely. All right, that seemed okay. like some advanced, advanced sewing right there. Honestly. Right, and, that, well, and part of pins. it, part of it, I think, is that is that curve. So you can see once it does that, it'll curve over really nicely. Okay, super great. And then I, you're just going to top stitch that with. We're just going to top stitch that, but let's try the other end. 
I'm trying the hardest part too. I hope you guys realize that like doing the curve is definitely not the easiest part. Okay, so now I want to try this a little bit differently. So that because we're all about trying things out here. Oh no, what did I do with the foot? There it is. Okay, I wanna try my edge stitch foot or you stitch in the ditch foot, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna move my needle over again. That's where it's going. Okay, so now if I stitch this, put this under here. Too many things underneath, it's not working. Okay, I need to get a pin since I have to kind of work it underneath the foot. Well, I'm really glad we decided to do something about the battery. I am too, because I was like, that was going to be a whole lot that I was going to have to skip. Yeah. Okay, so I need to scoot over a little so I can get under here, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to get that pin out because that is super in the way. And what I want is for my edge of my stuff to run right along here. I'm going to put a little clip in up here to hold it so I can get there. So you're running this stitch in the ditch foot right along the edge, but then you side basically side shifted your needle over to be a quarter of an inch away from yes. that. And it's going to be not quite be a quarter of an inch, but I think that it will help me to get it on there better. So we'll see. I might try switching the foot at this corner. Just so it's basically tacked down. Okay, clip helped a lot. Yeah, how many how many strong fingers do you have? Okay, so almost enough. Almost enough fingers. Okay, I still can't see it. All right, so <laughs> this tends to be more helpful with cotton, which is why I wanted to try that. And so now we're gonna switch back to the other foot. People are like, really, is she just trying this all live? Yes, yes I am, because that's the way I roll. Okay, so that one, if I'm doing it with cotton, it works really well. I don't like the way that it worked with the cuddle. Okay, so you're back to the regular foot. You're in yep. a straight stitch. We're just going to stitch over where we stitched before using, because see where it was stitching, but I couldn't get it over to a quarter. Oh, got it. And that was just because uh, there wasn't that much movement available in the, right. in the needle shift. Right, in the needle shift, and just there wasn't enough um, that it could get underneath the foot, right, because it's so thick. So I think it's just part of, yeah. It was worth a try. It was worth a try. Yeah, totally it was worth a try. Because now I know. Because sometimes that edge stitch foot comes in super handy. That one, not as much. All right, so yeah, this seems like it's flowing around those corners and along those straights a lot easier. It makes sense. Okay, so now let me get a couple of clips in here because I want to get this so that it will stay where I want it to because right now I'm trying to fight it more than I actually want to. So there was the question, uh -huh. um, can, can this be made on a basic sewing machine? I mean, I under, understand that you have like, you know, a very strong machine here. Yes. Um, and it's a lot of layers. But it's a lot can, of layers. You can do it. So you could do it. What I would suggest is what we were doing, what we were doing before is the mixing and matching. So this would be something that if you want it, if your machine didn't have as much oomph as you want it to, this would be a place that you could absolutely do a cotton back with the foam stabilizer, like the where we use this, this could be a cotton and use this as a as the cuddle because this is the part that touches you. Or this part could be a cuddle and this part could be the um, the cuddle as well. And one side could be cotton. You could mix it and match it depending on what your machine wants to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a that's a way to, to 
to give you a little more headroom. Right. Because I think, and I think that like, honestly, like the, um, the soft and stable is just, is thick. And so it definitely, um, not all machines I think could probably handle it super easily. You can make basically any machine do what you want it to do. Oh, you know what we didn't do on this? Cut it down first. Not funny. Okay. <laughs> so remember she said um, she took a half an inch off. Oh, because she changed the, yeah. the other. Yeah, because I was like, that's not going to fit. It's totally not going to fit. And that's why, because it needs a half an inch to come off. I can get it to measure. There we go. We're just going to eyeball it. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is a fancy backtrack. Shh. I like it. <laughs> it's a fancy backtrack. It's Yeah. Why should I was gonna get that that little experiment figured out beforehand and then I didn't. So I'm gonna take it off about a half an inch. Mostly just so we can get enough off. So we can try it. Okay. So if I do that. It brings it around, makes it here. Okay. And seriously, even with the fancy backtrack, because it's the, because the it's, it's can't get cuddled because it's cuddled, get the whole anything wonky gets lost in the nap. It's totally. Awesome. I'm gonna cut off a little bit more there. Okay, so let's stitch this on both ends. So it's interesting because it's quite a bit different. I would say that for me that, and this is, I haven't done the top stitching yet, but for me, this is actually easier than the quarter inch. So that was, that was good. Cause I thought it, it didn't make any difference when I was doing it on a straight line, but doing it here, I'm like, I can tell a difference and I like, I like it better. All right. Top stitch. Um, should we do a serpentine? I think so. Okay. Let's do a serpentine. Serpentine, I do it at 4 and 1.8. Let's see how that works today. That's generally my default for cuddle. So the default on the machine is different than that. So whatever your um, machine is defaulting to, you can change that. Put my needle down. I want to make sure that when it's on the left edge, it's going to be about there. Let's see if it'll work the way I want. Come on. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to stitch around, use my little stiletto to keep it where I want it to be. And the other side might use a zigzag and see what that looks like too. We'll do all the experimenting. Okay. So basically just keeping that right along the edge. And when I'm doing this, I didn't really explain, sorry, the raw edge here, it is just the raw edge flipped over. I bring it over and I tack it right down by the seam. So I want it to go down right along the edge. And if I did it right, or even close to right, it should stitch right along the edge of the back, the binding on the back. Oh, look at that. Okay. So that's what you're trying to get it to do is to, to be right along that edge on both sides. Well, that looks great. Okay. All right. If so I let's... do say so myself. Thanks. All right. So let's try it on the other end. We'll do that with a zigzag. I'll put a couple of clips in there just to hold it where I want it to be. Get my stiletto back and let's take it back over here. We'll go back to zigzag. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to do a four and a four. Part of the reason for that is because we're going to go around a corner and uh, a bigger stitch length is harder around corners. So there's um, some inf information for you. I'm also going to do this. Okay, because I want this at my left side here. So I know where the needle's gonna come down. Lift it up. Okay, so now my needle's gonna come down right at the edge of my fabric. And as I come along here, I'm gonna hold this, this raw edge, so that it goes right on that stitching line. Okay. There we go. So 
I'm just going to work my way around this corner, trying to keep that edge on the left side, where it comes down on the zag, basically. So if I do this too fast, this will get out of control on the corners. So make sure that you're um, just holding it correctly and going slow. So a little smaller stitch length is helpful there. Okay. All right, so there. Now we can see how that looks like with the zigzag. Let's see if I can get that under the light a little better. Okay, so there's the zigzag on this side. And again, it's with the white thread, so you're gonna see it just a little bit and kind of fluff it up. If you're using um, a Lux Cuddle on this, it'd be super easy to fluff. And then there's the back. Wow, yeah. Okay, so it's pretty crazy because that's still the white thread. It just is hidden in there. All right, so if you really wanted to hide, do a do a navy thread, but really that's what it is. So so there was a, that was some good experimenting. Because I really do feel like this was easier for me. And I think Annie is so used to doing those teeny tiny little quarter inch bindings that that was easier for her. I do think that it's um, it's a neat it appearance, like the smaller edge of it. I like the way that it looks. Maybe if I took some time and practiced, <laughs> I would get better at that one. Back to the, the, the magic is practice. Yeah, the magic is practice. It really is. Like, honestly, if something <laughs> is difficult, if you just practice it more, it gets better. Um, so for me, I've done the half inch seam or the ha yeah, the half inch seam on the quilt binding for lots and lots of things. Um, so for me, that's um, just the way that it's supposed to be. Um, it's easy to do. So um, maybe if you are a cotton quilter, a regular patchwork quilter doing a quarter inch might actually make a little bit more sense. The measurement for that was one and a one and a quarter. And I think that the biggest difference is that corner, the curve of that corner is the part that will slow you down a little bit. So um, uh, feedback is, yeah, try it, see what works. I would just do a small corner is what I would do. And if you want to do this absolutely yourself. So I think that the cuddle binding on here, honestly, if you did this out of cotton, this was intimidating to do it all out of cuddle. You could do cotton here and then do cuddle on the binding because this is the part that is going to be like rubbing against your neck um, is the is the cuddle part. And it's so soft and yummy. So absolutely do it. Um, super good. This one is the one that we did with the cotton. So this was the part that was uh, what happened. I'm yawning. Oh, OK. I yawned this... <laughs> and I didn't want it to be contagious. So I was trying to hide it in a smile. Sorry. Got it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so the cotton, the cotton part here, this part is easy. Like, honestly, when I switched it out to cotton, I was like, that wasn't any easier to do this out of cotton. Um, yeah. Then you want to do the whole thing out of cuddle if you can. Okay. All right. So we have a crazy little binding, but I'm going to tie it up here. This would be sort of what it would be like. All right. Nice. <laughs> With the Franken, two different endings. Franken buddy. It's a Franken buddy. But now I have examples of doing both kinds, which... I feel like it's important and half the reason everybody we do really like okay. you know, we'll go through your whole thought process about all of that. that Good. I, I think it's, I think it's nice. And I get, and we've talked about this before. And even on the other cuddle talk, group, we talk about it. Like the, it's kind of nice because I get to experiment and try and play things. Um, and then I get to teach you because I have the opportunity in the materials here to just kind of play with stuff and see what happens. So that is the bosom buddy pattern here's all my pieces look I've like all this stuff but then we have people who are going to get kits that they can make their own okay um I think it's cute that we both had the we both had sports ones yeah absolutely like Annie had the the one that's the blue with the white like chalk lines on it it's super cute mm -hmm. um okay so we need winners hey Ellen there Let's they see. are did we get them yep they're up oh there they are okay um the the winners for today are Patty A Terry E and Yvonda H. So congratulations to the three of you, to Patty, Terry, and Yvonda. You will win a Bosom Buddy cuddle kit from Annie. And like I said, she's including everything. Well, she told you. She's including everything. I think the, um, the uh, hook and loop tape is in there, the soft and stable, the fabric, the pattern, all of that good stuff is in there for you to be able to put together your own Bosom Buddy. 
like we talked about, it's a great project for a lot of different reasons and not just for somebody who's had a mastectomy, but for anything where you've had issues, sensitivity issues um, with a seatbelt. I think that it's a fabulous project. I can also see that it'd be um, kind of nice for littles that are like always get annoyed by that. But maybe that's just because those are the short people I've known. <laughs> so <laughs> I know Anna said she liked it too. So the what winners, they need to, they need to get personal message personal message shannon fabrics yep. with their information and then we will pass that along to annie and yep. those will be shipped from from annie. annie exactly exactly so yes just send us a message your mailing address all of that good stuff and uh, we'll get those out to you well annie will get those out to you all right so next week we're going to be back thanks that was a lot um we'll be back next week we are going to be at our first little show this and we, I mean, we did quilt festival but we're at our first um shop this time so we are going up to in stitches in dixon california they are in northern california so if you are anywhere in that area you should come to InStitches. We'll be there next Tuesday. We'll be doing the tree skirt. So the tree skirt is a pattern that we have available. We'll be doing that one. I wanted to let you guys know, one, if you're in the area, please come. It's going to be super fun. The other thing is that they have tree skirt kits available. So if you go to their website, which was institches450.com, Yes, correct? right up there on the screen, too. Okay. There you go. You're going to be able to get the tree skirt kit so that you can sew along with us next week. So that even if you can't come because you're on the East Coast and we haven't gotten there yet, um, you'll still be able to make a tree skirt with us. And it's a super fun, really easy pattern. And they put together a whole bunch of different kits. It's like six that are different really, colorways, right? Yeah, they're like so far. I, I mean, think that there are Maybe there won't there be that many by the time you get there, but yes. Right. <laughs> So hurry. Um, but there are a bunch of variations on that tree skirt with two different fabrics and it uses a print and a solid or a luxe. So hopefully a bunch of you will find that you can join us next week. And then two weeks after that, on November 30th and December 1st, we will be at the quilt parlor in Battle Mountain, Nevada. So um, that will be the next stop. And we are making a pillow bed there. So that will be fun and exciting. So next week in, uh, in stitches, then we'll be back in LA for a week and then out to Battle Mountain, Nevada. So hopefully we can see you at one of those shops. And if not, we will be announcing our full 2022 tour um, sometime in early December. So that's um, in the works right now and very, very exciting. So I'm looking forward to all of that and getting back into the shops with you guys. So thanks so much. I think that's it. Is that right? That's, I think that's a show. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy sewing. <laughs>